Hello? This is Steve Nielsen. Hey, Steve yeah, Nielsen. Yeah, so, callers, we have Stephen Nielsen, which is the current chairman of the Libertarian Party of Washington State. And he is a great guy. I've met him. I've been Facebook friends with him on ever since I've got involved in the Libertarian Party. Yes. Um, How are you doing, he's Steve? He's one of my personal inspiration type guys. So, Stephen, what do you think about the, uh, the refugee situation? Well, I think uh, it's, uh, it's quite interesting how, uh, first of all, everyone's talking about it, which is great because I don't have to listen to anybody talk about the uh, damn Starbucks cup anymore. So let's just get that out of the way. Uh, people are finally talking about something that matters. Uh, what's interesting, and, uh, and I, made a, I uh, made a public statement about this uh, yesterday, um, is that uh, in a nation, a conservative nation, a Christian nation, uh, we don't seem to be acting very Christianly uh, in that uh, we should have a general spirit of goodwill towards uh, towards individuals, but uh, the conservative uh, bias, if you will, uh, is that uh, it's open season on any Muslims and we should be shooting these people if they come into our neighborhood. Um, I, I have a problem with that. That's not, that's not the kind of uh, country I want to live in. So first and foremost, uh, when it comes to refugees, whether they're from Vietnam, Syria, Germany, Russia, uh, we need to treat people like people. And that's uh, one thing that we've stopped doing here in America. That's, yeah, that's absolutely. I think, I think a lot of, of people don't disagree with what you're saying. They just want it done in a responsible and a safe manner for the people who are already within inside the United States. And, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Right now, there's real serious questions on how these people are being vetted before they come into a nation that's hostile against us at this time. So I, I kind of understand some arguments. I don't agree with, you know, that we should be shooting people who come across the borders if they're just, just because they're Syrian refugees. But I, I haven't seen a whole lot of that talk. But I, I have seen a lot of people say that they would like at least a pause until we can get a better understanding of who's coming in. Well, I don't think that the, the Syrian government is being hostile towards the United States. I believe that's ISIS. Uh, a lot of people and the refugees that, are from that, Syria. A lot of people in that region are hostile against the United I mean, States. They, they don't we, like us because we know, fuck with everybody. That's but. right. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, people are hostile against us. <laughs> you know, there's, there's serious credible threat to some of these people that could be posing as refugees coming in. And I think people just want uh, assurances that these people are, are, are being checked out safely. I, I mean... But we have to understand that we don't even have assurances that our neighbor in our own neighborhood, born, raised, blue-blooded, red-blooded American, uh, isn't going to uh, build a bomb in his shed and blow up the local diner. We don't have those assurances. We have to have faith in our fellow man that uh, that they're going to do good. Now, some can say that, oh, uh, you know, Muslim extremists are going to do bad things. Well, there are extremists already in America, uh, whether they're lone wolves, whether they are, uh, you know, right-wing radicals or left-wing radicals, uh, you know, uh, these groups that used to go, uh, you know, eco-terrorists, uh, you know, several years back was the big thing. Um, there's never going to be an assurance. There's never going to be that assurance, and you can never have that assurance unless you're living under extreme authoritarian status control. Thank you. <laughs> so that, as a, you're, you're just never, ever going to have total security in a free nation. You have to have faith in your fellow man. That is such a perfect statement right there. Like, I couldn't have said it better myself. Literally, I'm not very good at words. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so, so we just let everybody come in, or <coughs> I mean, we so have. Did we let everybody? Did we let everybody come into America? Yeah, I mean, just. I, I'm, yeah, I, I am. I am absolutely in favor of open borders around the world. I think that, that what we have is we have uh, uh, imaginary lines on a map. I think that, uh, uh, you know, there is a breakdown in the, in the structure of society in a global market, uh, and it's done so to, uh, impact, uh, corporate, corporatism, 
in this country and, and, and throughout the world. And what, what we see coming home is actually um, the, the blowback that we hear, but it's, uh, it's uh, a term that I'm using more and more, it's corporate warfare. We are in this perpetual state of war because it's lucrative. Uh, you know, I had worked uh, for almost a decade for uh, the military industrial complex uh, um, and uh, worked on military contracts and I, I know the amount of money that is made by companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Now, Lockheed Martin, who built their entire company portfolio based on nation building and defense and setting up all aspects of the government because it's lucrative. They get a lot of money. There's a lot of money in corporate warfare. So there, there are people who are benefiting from this, and those, that it is that corporate element. The people who are not benefiting it is the, the men, women, and children who are left trying to scrape by a life. So when we bomb the crap out of their home, what are they to do with their families? And yeah, they're going to be pissed, and they're going to want revenge. And, but you know what? If they come here, or if they come anywhere in the world, and they see that it's not like that, that the normal average person isn't like that, then you have more hope of changing their heart than you do by forcing them to stay underneath the bombs and the guns and the spread of death. Excellent. I don't even know how to follow that up, really. <laughs> so... So what do we do for these people that, that need these research researches? I mean, you've got 32 states now uh, that that want to pause or stop this from happening altogether, and, and that's, uh, you know, a, some people are arguing that that's the majority of the states and the president should, you know, do something. What, 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 what do we do for these people? I mean, because we have to try to satisfy everybody. So, so how, how do we... Right. So we already have a refugee plan. And what happens is they identify uh, based off of, uh, you know, whatever systems of counting they have, uh, which regions they will allow refugees to come from. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and they've allocated actually a lower amount, a lesser amount this year in that 10,000 Syrian refugees number uh, than we did, uh, you know, a few years, uh, a few years back. Uh, but, but one way or the other, are we going to... Uh, Stop refugees in general. Are we going to stop uh, America as an asylum, um, you know, a political asylum country? I, I don't think that we are. Um, what needs to happen is we need to uh, maintain a vetting process. We need to maintain, um, you know, checks on folks that are coming in, but allow folks who are requesting political asylum to continue to come to our country. Um, if that is, uh, you know, if, if that's the will of um, you know, our country, the type of country that we want to be, a goodwill nation. Now, the states that are saying that they are not going to allow Syrian refugees, they typically can't do that. The, the Supreme Court made a ruling um, some time back that had actually said that the, um, Congress, uh, Congress set the rules for, uh, for immigration and for, um, uh, you know, citizenship, if you will, and for asylum. And once an individual comes into the country, a state cannot deny them um, food, they cannot deny them work, they cannot deny them housing uh, to violate their natural rights. And that's what this is about. The natural right for a person to live without fear of oppression, death, so on and so forth. We have natural rights. And so the government is actually, um, is actually looking beyond the fear factor and they are supporting the natural right of these people to seek uh, a peaceful life. Now, is there going to be a bad group that comes in? There may be. There may be, but I have to have hope that, um, you know, that uh, the process that we have for vetting is going to hold that out. And the 32 states can say what they will, but if a state like Washington lets the refugee in, there's nothing that Texas can do to stop them from moving down to Houston. Yeah, no kidding. Especially once they get here. Yeah, once they get here, you can't track them any left after that. They Correct. Can. I mean, unless you hold them in a prison camp. Like right. FDR. And, and it should also be noted um, that France is still today allowing Syrian refugees into their country. Really? 
Yeah, that, they that, said that really should take, be. I think they said they're going to take thirty thousand. So we're whining about ten. We're taking more than ten. And and France, who just got the terrorist attack, is taking thirty. So only because they're going to live up. So they, listen, the French president said that the only reason why they're doing that is because they're going to live up to what they said. They're going to you know live up to their end of what do they what said. they said they're going right. to. So. I have this is on a totally you know different subject. Completely. This is on a totally different subject since I have Stephen on the phone and we don't have that much time with him. A lot of times when I tag Stephen into conversations, it has to do with what are we going to do about the roads? Who would build the roads under your libertarian government? And a lot of times I say if we didn't have government around telling us what we could and couldn't do, we wouldn't even need roads at this point. And then I go ahead and I tag in Stephen Nelson because he's basically a rocket scientist. Isn't that what you are? Yes, you're not a rocket scientist. It's not like you're like a rocket scientist. You are a rocket scientist. <laughs> so <laughs> explain that to the people how how that that is a true statement. Uh, that's, that's my degree. I'm an astronautical engineer uh, by degree and uh, practicing quality engineer. I've worked on human space flight and nuclear missiles, uh, uh, military satellites. So uh, yeah, a little, little bit of dabbling, a little bit of rocket science and things. So. How is it that we wouldn't need roads if government wasn't involved? When I tag you in a conversation, and I do it often, fairly often, it, it, say, okay. say that to the listeners really quick. I have a question, too. All right. So to, to, to keep it brief and without getting too technical, um, there are very uh, very simple designs uh, for, um, you know, for flying vehicles. Uh, I actually have designed uh, uh, what I call the Vermana, which is a gyroscope uh, stabilized. A jet-powered motorcycle um, that is, uh, um, you know, it would, it would be a couple hundred thousand dollars to build and buy, you know, prototype. But the design is sound. Uh, there are uh, government regulations that would restrict the, you know, the fair use of this technology. Uh, there are several individuals, uh, you know, uh, that have created um, uh, fan, you know, fan-type uh, hovering uh, helicopters uh, that aren't uh, that aren't able to be used. Uh, there's uh, regulations on ultralight uh, aircraft uh, that can that can take off in you know less than 50 feet of runway uh, in, that uh, you can't fly over roadways or over populated areas. So you know the uh, you know being able to travel from point A to point B uh, via the air is so heavily regulated. Um, you know they will take your you know your, your livelihood if uh, you know if you were to violate these uh, uh, you know these uh, air traffic restrictions. Um, you know, that, that they make it illegal. And not only that, they, they suppress, you know, the technology. Uh, if you would say, if anybody wants to do research, research the Williams, uh, X jet, the WASP, um, the aerial, uh, um, space, uh, platform, I think it was called, the Williams X jet. Uh, you can find it in the 1970s. Um, the, the government, uh, created, um, this technology and, and, uh, research that they classified because the engine was then used to cruise missiles. Um, but we had the technology 40 years ago to uh, fly at 10,000, between 0 and 10,000 feet at 60 miles an hour, uh, single point, uh, just basically riding a jet engine. Uh, not fuel efficient, but the technology exists. Uh, and uh, with that kind of technology, you don't need roads. There you go. There you go, folks. <laughs> That's why you don't need roads. So that answers the question. <laughs> Who would build the roads yeah. in a libertarian society? We wouldn't need them at this point <laughs> in human history. That's a beautiful right. answer, though, too. That's wasn't like, that just great? Yeah, that's great. How are you going to argue with a rocket scientist? <laughs> I mean, you better come at me with some higher education than the rocket scientist if I ever want to consider your answer to be valid. So uh, there you uh, go. Steven, so, I, one, of the, one of the most interesting arguments that I've heard from, uh, you know, from folks who just are... Um, I, I don't know, they just have statism bred into them. They said, well, what are you going to do when the, the traffic gets so bad, you know, when you're flying around? I said, go higher. <laughs> or lower. <laughs> or lower. You know, if you look at the jet you know, they're floating around in these, in these lanes in the air and everybody's in the traffic. Or just up. <laughs> no, just go up. Go up. There, there are no roads. There's no traffic jam. You just go where... Go in the open space. So people need to start thinking outside of the box a little bit. Uh, and definitely outside of the road. Exactly. No color in the lines. Right. The lines are put there by statists. 
Hey, since we got you on the line, uh, do you know if there's going to be a libertarian candidate for governor this in this next election? Besides you? <laughs> well, there, uh, there definitely should be a libertarian candidate for governor. And I'll tell you why. The libertarian party in Washington has one major objective uh, in point of election festival. And that is to become a major part in the Washington. If they're able to do that, to get the ballot out. You're cutting out really, really bad. I don't know if it's uh, our end or your end. We have a hard... uh, it, it, It's probably me. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's, there it's, go. It's, it's back now. We we didn't hear a lot of what you just said about. You know, I asked you uh, if the Libertarian Party was going to have a governor. I know what he said. Yeah, but can can you repeat that for us? I, I'm, I'm being censored by the government. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're trying to stop it. That's stop exactly what that word. That's the message. So the I think that we absolutely need to have uh, a governor candidate. We need to have a full executive slate. Um, the the objective of the Libertarian Party in 2016 is to become a major party in Washington State. It gives us ballot access. Uh, it gives us the access to uh, to funds that go to the major parties, um, and it really uh, provides us an avenue for um, you know for those big wins in the in the state legislature. Uh, so, if you actually do the numbers and you look at where we were this election cycle, we pulled in ninety five thousand votes in twelve races. Uh, in eight races uh, in the twenty fourteen cycle, we pulled in about eighty thousand votes. Now, mind you that for president in 2012, Gary Johnson in Washington State only pulled in 42,000 votes. So in the, in the previous two elections, um, in 2014 and 2015, the libertarian candidates have pulled in more than double what Gary Johnson was able to accomplish uh, in this state in 2012. So if we were able to run a full slate of candidates uh, at the executive level, and if we're able to run 22, 22.4 is the number of candidates that we need on the general election ballot to average 7,000 votes in their state legislative races and get them to vote up ticket as well. We can get 160,000 votes for whomever the libertarian candidate is for president. And then obviously, hopefully it'll help, it'll help out the governor. Um, and we can get the 5% required to attain major party status. So if we can get 5% for a president and we can pull in significant numbers down ticket uh, as well, then we can start making an impact. Whether it's a governor who's carrying the message, um, whether it is uh, you know somebody at a lower executive level, like we have an excellent candidate that we're trying to field for a public lands commissioner from one of the, uh, the Indian tribes, which is going to be um, a, a, an amazing headline that, uh, you know, Indian, you know, tribal... Uh, member, you know, is, is seeking to be the public lands commissioner um, with the intent of um, fighting the federal government for the 30% uh, of, of the state lands that, uh, that the federal government holds. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, um, but we need to and run candidates, um, and we need to focus on that objective of getting major party status in the state. Stephen, is he a libertarian? Is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And and so he's the he's the guy that's going to run for governor? No, no, no. That's, yeah, uh, that's an individual that uh, uh that we are working on for public lands commissioner. Okay. We've got uh, we've got a, an attorney general uh candidate. Uh we are looking at we've got a lieutenant governor, um potential governor candidate uh and we've got about 54 uh state representative candidates um, that have pledged and we're trying to get those commitments and, and uh, announcements and get their party or get their uh, campaign set up. Do, do you so, have anybody running for the seat in the 19th? Come again? Do you have anybody running? So, okay, let's back up. So, who? So I, I, don't, I don't have my list with me, so okay, I can't right. tell you exactly uh, where it is, but uh, I can definitely, uh, I can give you yeses and nos. Um, without any names, I can't make any announcements. Okay. So what about the nineteenth? No, 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 governor. Oh, for governor. No, no. What about you for governor? Are you going to run for governor? 
I'm not making any announcements at this time. Uh, uh, I, I am considering a run, uh, but, uh, you know, it takes family. It takes uh, money. It takes uh, a lot of candidates uh, beneath me uh, in, the, in the state races, and that would be part of the strategy if uh, something like that were to happen. Um, I, I, I believe that I have uh, the message for the party. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, if I'm going up against uh, Inslee, or this uh, Bryant fellow from the Republican side, uh, I think that I've got the best message uh, of the three of us. Um, but we'll see what, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see uh, how, how it plays out. Uh, first and foremost, I've got a party to run, and right. uh, uh, I've got a family to raise. So I'm, I'm focusing on those two things first, and it's, uh, it's definitely still in the cards that, uh, you know, that um I'm uh, looking at what that uh, what what that might look like in 2016. I've been saying it for at least a year. I'm pretty sure. Right. Well, I'm, just, I'm just kind of curious now. <laughs> if we don't, if it doesn't work out that we don't get a libertarian candidate for governor, who uh, who do I mean? Do we just pick from the best candidate? That's I mean, run? I mean, somebody is going mean, to somebody if will it, file for under a libertarian for governor. I mean, if it's not Stephen. If it's not somebody. So there'll be a libertarian it. at least on the ticket. <laughs> we all do it if nobody else does. So the other thing that we need to understand is that Washington State has really screwed up the election process. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, they took away uh, political party affiliation, and now everybody has preferred a certain party. Uh, they be, we've become a blanket primary um, um, state, which is which is tough, but we're we're trying to use it to our advantage and and where we can across the state get head-to-head -head races. That's great. But in races like for governor, where there are 14 people who will decide to run, um, we also, with that top two, we, if you do not finish in the top two, you don't get to the, uh, to the general election. So any candidate for governor um, is uh, from the Libertarian Party is live or die in the general election, and we have to have um, we have to have an electoral strategy that um, that sees us through the August primary, and that doesn't happen unless we get uh, 50 to 100 legislative candidates on the ballot. Now, they've also handicapped us because any libertarian candidate um, that happens to run in a race that's only head-to-head -head, doesn't get on the primary ballot. So there will be no election for those races if there are only two individuals because they automatically advance to the general election. So there is a, uh, I guess, a hidden, a hidden election that happens. And so what they've done is they, uh, they basically made it very difficult for up-ticket voting uh, or down-ticket voting because they've taken candidates off of the primary ballot um, and then... If you don't win, uh, you don't get onto the general uh, ballot. So they've made the math very, very difficult uh, for um, for our party in the in the primary, which is why we need uh, to get that five percent uh, for the uh, for our presidential candidate this year, so we can start uh, impacting some change. So, who for the Libertarian Party are you looking at for president for presidential candidate? Well, of course, I, I cannot uh, openly endorse uh, any candidate. Uh, I really wish that Gary Johnson would make a decision about whether or not he's running. I think that that would uh, definitely heal a lot of wounds in the party. Um, Stephen Corbell is uh, not the most flattering candidate, but I believe that he's got the uh, he's got the principles down solid, uh, and this. Uh, uh, what's his name? Peterson guy that you like. Austin what's Peterson. Austin yeah. Peterson. Yeah, Austin Peterson. Uh, that guy's uh, that guy's uh, a hoot. I don't know that I fully trust him quite yet. He's a little <laughs> bit uh, loose cannon, but uh, you know what? I think that he just might have uh, uh, you know he just might have the personality to uh, uh, to bring something to the table. I'm I, I'm uh, starting to watch him a little bit more. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it takes, uh, uh, a character, if you will, to stand up and, and, uh, and get that attention and, and really, uh, drive the message home. Um, so, uh, of the, you know, of the several people that I know, uh, who are intending to run or are being asked to run, those are three folks that I've got my eyes on. 
Yeah, I, I'm an awesome Peterson guy. I was a Gary Johnson guy for a long time until he just hasn't announced a run yet. I mean, he came out with his, if I was going to run, this would be why. Exactly, and that's been the most disappointing thing that I've, uh, that I've uh, been quite vocal about. I want Gary Johnson to say, uh, you know, that he is running and that he's running because, not uh, if I were going to run, it would be because. We don't need a candidate just to fill a spot on the, on, you know, on the ballot. We need somebody who really believes that they can win as a libertarian, that they can deliver the message as a libertarian, and that they have what it takes to lead our party and lead this nation. Not somebody who might run because we need somebody to fill a spot. That's not inspiring, and I think that this party needs a whole lot of inspiration. Yeah. So, do you have any more questions for Stephen? No, I just I wanted to, I just, you know, I, I, you've got two guys that are really hammering hard away already. Uh, you know, Inslee, of course, you know, he's already out there, you know, running campaigns and Bill Bryant's every, all Every time I state. hear that name, it makes me want to vomit. Which one? Inslee. Inslee. Yeah, it does. But anyway, uh, I mean, these guys are out hitting hard. And they have been for a long time. I'm just, I'm just concerned that a candidate might be jumping in. I mean, you time sensitive in elections, and the cycle has already begun, and, and and we don't have a candidate yet. So I was just a little concerned. <laughs> right. It is all about timing. It's also about strategy. Um, we're building uh, the farm team. Uh, any libertarian candidate for governor uh, needs to be able to raise uh, on the order of 10 to $20 million uh, in the state. Uh, we'd be lucky if a presidential libertarian candidate can run that kind of money um, because the nature of the, uh, of the election, um, if I were to run as governor, my goal would be to get as many down-ticket candidates elected as possible and carry the message for the Libertarian Party to strengthen us going into the general election so that the objectives of the Libertarian Party are met, that we become a major party status, uh, uh, we gain major party status, and that legislative candidates across the state um, can win in 2016. I think that that is the, uh, the, the objective, uh, because without $10 million in a primary race, um, there, there isn't a, isn't a huge chance that we beat the top two, but we can make headlines. We can affect down ticket uh, uh, candidates. Uh, we can sell the libertarian message and sell the candidates who are moving on in the general election. I think that it's more important that we get uh, those individuals, and that any individual who is running for governor uh, should understand that it's more important to. Uh, to lead others into success and into victory than it is for them to, uh, you know, to, to die on the sword trying to win. But there's a bigger picture going on. It's called liberty. <laughs> it's called liberty. Liberty. <laughs> and this is because liberty with Curtis Hart. And Chris Moore said, Chris Moore the called Moore in, said, by the way. This is Stephen Nelson, chairman of the Washington State Libertarian Party, the Libertarian Party of Washington State. That's what it's actually called. Yeah. And uh, hopefully he'll be running for governor, as long as he can get the support that's needed to do that. So thank you for calling in very much, Stephen. All right. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you.